Yo, how are we doing everybody? So today I'm doing a guide on chapter 14 for you, my heart. Now, this is definitely one of the more interesting maps I think the game has thrown at us. Because like in this one, uh, finally, <laughs> we're not being like uh, flanked on both sides, but uh, there are two boats. We start on the boat on the right, enemy team is on the boat on the left, we need to make our way to the other side. And the only way to do so is uh, with this one rope <laughs> attaching the two boats. And uh, right at the start, there's actually a like hawk soldier that is standing in the way. Until he moves, no one can go across. So at first, really all you can do is, if your characters have buffs like haste or uh, something like a strength up, defense up, you can use those, but you literally can't move over to the other side. Uh, the Hawk Knights themselves will start moving over, so you can uh, do your attacks into them. Uh, personally, for my team composition, I'm doing, uh, as far as like uh, close range goes, the uh, Dancer, which you have to use, uh, Saranoa, Eridor, Roland, and Ana. I'm going to be trying to get the four of them over to the other side as fast as possible. And then behind them, I'm going to have my mages. I will have um, uh, Frederica, uh, the Ice Mage, I constantly forget his name, and the Wind Mage. So we have th uh, three mages going into this, uh, plus my uh, healer. And then I do also have my uh, archer, who is also riding on a hawk. Like, she can actually start attacking uh, enemies on the opposite ship before going over. But for everybody else, it's quite a bit more difficult. So, for the mages, I definitely want to utilize them to do as much damage as I can uh, to the enemies that are moving over, these hawk soldiers. I'll be doing the same with uh, the dancer, just because she has the moon jump ability. So it's easier to go for those follow-up attacks. But I want to try to make sure Eridor gets over as fast as possible, because like his movement is very, very low. So if he gets trapped behind his own allies, it can be just such a process trying to get him onto the other boat. Uh, and then yeah, just get Saranoa and Roland over. Uh, they have much more movement at 5 and 6, so it's uh, quite a bit easier. Um, also, if you have a movement ring, which you can find on uh, one of the maps, I forget which one, uh, during the exploration phase, uh, that can help you uh, increase your movement as well to help one of those characters get across. But uh, yeah, definitely focusing on getting them over first, because obviously if you get your uh, squishier people, your mages, your healers, etc., if they go over first, then they're just going to be attacked by so many different units and probably will not be able to survive uh, more than one hit, if one hit at all, depending on who hits them. Uh, specifically, Avlora over there, she hits like a truck, just like she did back in Chapter 7. So I'm trying not to gain her ire, if I can help it, you know, I want her to be nice and chill and relaxed. Um, I find that tends to be the case, at least for a few turns if I don't go uh, forward at all on the right side. Like the tile where you pop out of, like the first tile on the other side of the rope connecting the two boats, um, that tile seems to be fine and the tile just to its right seems to be fine. But anything further to the right or higher than that seems to get uh, Avlora to start moving forward. And I would not suggest uh, starting the fight with her any sooner than you have to. Uh, I do try to get uh, my healers over as well as fast as I can because uh, getting the healers over does help um, so they can actually heal everyone that's going to start taking damage. And uh, it's easier to move the medic healer. I think she uh, has more movement than uh, Glee, Glay, I, I don't remember the girl's name, but yeah, the, uh, the main healer, the story healer that you start with. She is uh, she is not very mobile, but uh, either way, just trying to uh, take it easy. I'm going to fast forward this a bit because, yeah, this is just going to be me trying to get people over onto the boat. Because, yeah, the main problem I have is just that there's not enough space for everyone to get over. I mean, for one, I didn't want to move, like, past where Eridor is because likely that's when um, Avlora will start to attack. But 
like just getting characters to where like say Ana is at the higher elevation spot like not everybody has the uh jump because like you have to have a certain number of like uh, j uh jump in your stat or whatever so that you can actually move two tiles that have uh, a certain height in their elevation so, like Ana can do that the uh medica she can do that I believe uh, Benedict, if you're using him, I'm not using him, but uh, Benedict, I believe, can also make that height. The Dancer, the Dancer can also uh, get up that high using her Moon Jump ability. But um, yeah, everybody else kind of has to like work a little bit harder to get to the spots. Because uh, again, it's just trying to get everybody over there and there's very little space to work with. Um, it becomes easier once I've defeated more enemies because then there is uh, more space to move forward and I don't have to be as scared of Avlora since there's less damage going out. So let's go ahead and skip this forward a bit again. So yeah, right here, um, what I've done, you can see like those characters that could actually uh, jump up, I've moved them up there. Um, as for the Ice Mage, I didn't have a good spot to put him, but I threw his uh, Ice Shield over him. So he can at least be invincible for a hit. And um, I'm actually tanking here with Ana, which is kind of funny. Because uh, Ana doesn't exactly take hits well. She's not very defensive. But that's the thing. Like, she actually has good evasion. And then I'm using an accuracy drop as well, just to make it that much easier. So uh, there's a couple of times where Avlor is going to try to hit into Ana, which he just completely misses. Um... Obviously, this is a bit more on the luck side. It really depends on like what your stats are, because if you have a like nice, good amount of evasion, uh, you should be... Uh, I mean, it shouldn't be too bad, because even if she takes the one hit, you should be able to heal, and then hopefully you won't get hit by the second hit. And then on top of that, obviously, if you're playing... Um, you know, if you have higher stats than me, or you're playing on lower difficulty, then yeah, higher chance of evasion, and then also she can kind of she can take a hit like she can. It's not uh, not ideal, not exactly what she's striving to do, but um, that's basically the strategy I was working with. I was trying to um, trap the enemies that were going up there so they couldn't really position how they wanted, so not everyone is getting like all their damage out, because obviously that would be too much. Um, I am trying to be careful with the uh, positioning of my archer. I'm trying to get certain blinds out while at the same time I do want her to support um, my party members I have at the top because there are at least, what, like four units coming over there. I don't want them to take too much damage either. But yeah, this is definitely one of the uh, trickier parts of the fight. Um, Eridor is definitely going through his provokes. I'm preventing at least uh, two enemies right there from being able to attack into the more vulnerable ones. And once I defeat those, I'll be able to focus on Avlora a bit more. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and skip that forward a bit. So yeah, right here, I definitely have Avlora like... Uh, well, actually no, I had a bit more uh, surrounded earlier. But yeah, the enemies uh, were able to come uh, in. I had to drop back a bit because people were taking a lot of damage. I didn't want them to die. So just trying to be a bit more careful. And um, as much as I would like to be able to like use any status ailments on the Vlora, she just she's immune to all status ailments. All of them, she can't be put to sleep. She can't be blinded, like nothing. You are not going to stop her from doing what she wants to do. So essentially the best thing you can do is just limit her movement by placing uh, your units uh, in certain spots next to her, blocking her path of where she wants to go. Which is basically what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make sure that she can't go down to attack my softer units. I'm trying to, uh, like, uh, right there I have a path through my own units. So like Medica was able to take a hit, but then I can move her to the side. So that um, I have more time to get her HP back up and regain control of the situation. So let's go ahead and skip forward again. So yeah, right here I've defeated more of the enemies, which is allowing me to now like uh, push forward outside. Uh, you can see Ana here is like super duper low because she was not able to dodge one of the attacks 
which is the main thing I've been going for. I haven't been too scared to play a bit reckless with Avlora because she actually has a accessory that brings her back to life even if she does die. So I can uh, take more of the gamble. But again, just another reminder that anytime you're on a map where it's the exploration phase, <laughs> you absolutely want to uh, find all the items because yeah you will find really good items like that accessory that just brings you back to life on death it's very very strong but yeah just uh trying to make sure that Avlora can't get access to everyone again trying to move my uh, party members in good spots and then right here I'm trying to put this guy to sleep which is a nice little success right there because um, that just makes it easier for me. That's a spot that Avlora will not be able to walk into. And that's an enemy that's not attacking me. So putting enemies to sleep is super duper cool. Uh, that archer, definitely problematic. He was doing more damage to my ice mates than I would have liked. But I definitely had to take some sacrifices. Like willing to uh, take some risks here and there. Because yeah, this chapter is just really hard. Though to be fair, <laughs> I'm playing on hard mode. So it's just living up to its name. And then let's see, let's go ahead and skip forward a bit. So yeah, right here I have defeated almost all of the uh, all of the like random minions that are working under Avlora. At least I've cleared the ones that are on the top. These ones here on the bottom are not too much of an issue because yeah, killed uh, just killed that one. The other one's blind and paralyzed. That one only just woke up. So that means I can really, really uh, focus on the Vlora here. There is still that Archer, but I'm being cautious, trying to like actually watch my HP. So as long as I'm not doing anything too reckless, I'll be fine. And then yeah, just trying to make sure that uh, Vlora is nice and completely surrounded. I don't want her doing anything too uh, crazy. Again, she is still immune to status ailments, so... Nothing like poison, fury, none of that stuff is going to do anything to her. Um, I am worried a bit about Ana here. So I was definitely thinking about going over there to deal with the archer. But since I couldn't make it all the way there, I'm like, nah, let's just focus specifically on Avlora. At least let me get that uh, damage in. Because yeah, I was going to take cover, but yeah, it's just a waste of my uh, TP. But yeah, we're getting really good damage here on Avlora. But I'm trying to finish this guy off before his uh, Paralyze goes. And then yeah, I don't have the TP on my Ice Mage. So he is going to go ahead and just, uh, just end his turn. <laughs> Not a lot he can do. But yeah, I should probably... Like, I was trying to position in a way where like the uh, Archer... Couldn't actually hit me. I'm not sure if that is the proper position or not, because I think that I end up finishing off of Laura, or he targets somebody else. Yeah, Laura is going to strike in a rolling. Yeah, it is. It is really good damage for sure, but uh, not enough to take me out. There's the ice arrow on Eridor, and he gets follow-up attack as well. But again, plenty of HP. This is not a problem. Uh, I've calculated for all of this, so no need to worry. Um, I, again, really recommend, as you should do for every chapter before you start the battle, go to the encampment and make sure that you've bought a good number of recovery items. Because, yeah, I used probably, like, maybe 10 large recoveries uh, just in this chapter. Because there's just so much damage going out. And the healers, even though I have two healers, they cannot stay on top of everything. There's no way. But, yeah, that right there is going to finish off of Laura. She was very, very strong. I'm not surprised she gave me so much trouble in chapter seven. But uh, thankfully in this chapter, uh, defeating of Laura ends it. So you don't have to defeat every single minion. I didn't have to worry about, uh, especially that archer that definitely would have taken a few more turns. But uh, yeah, that was my strategy. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.